What's up guys, this is Austin with Hot Rod Heaven and I'm here with Steve today to talk about his car. So Steve, tell me, what kind of car do we have here? Well, what we have, Austin, is we got a 69 and a half A12 Super B. It's a unique package being an A12. It came with a, just a certain drivetrain and powertrain on it, and it separated it from the other Super Bs, and they only made them for about 90 days. It's such a beautiful, rare car. What made you want to get this? This time or the first time? This is the second time I've had this, this very car. I got this car originally in 1980 when I was 16. A friend of the family had an auction house and said, hey, I got a car you might be interested in. So I said, okay, I'll come down and look at it. And of course, as soon as yeah. I saw it in the garage, you know, I was like, oh yeah, yeah I'll, I'll I take this. it. Yeah. You know, yeah, I had no idea what it was at the time. It wasn't until I had it for a couple of days and rolled it into the local Dodge dealer. I kind of knew the service manager and he yeah. comped down and says, well, hey, I'll tell you what you have. And he's laid it all down for me. Yes. I had no clue what it was. I just knew it was neat. So what happened? What? Why did you have to get it a second time? Well, I had to sell it. I went I went in the service okay. and uh, had no place to put it. So I sold it. And recently, say last eight or 10 years, my wife was after me to, hey, did you ever look for your car? I said, no, I don't. I figured it got tore up or yeah. Which happens a lot, it, it unfortunately. Does, especially, especially when you've got a car that was built to drag race. Exactly. This, this is the last of the factory super stock race cars out of Chrysler. I put an app on my phone that when these had come up for sale, this one showed up. And I said, I took it home and I said, hey, this is what it looked like. And it's pretty well, pretty much option the same. Did, she, did you ever get my VIN number? She asked me. I wound up calling a uh, farmer's insurance agent that uh, my folks had been with there towards okay. the end of, of their of their lives and he was actually able to track down the VIN number for the car when I had it in 80. And Which is, inc that's incredible, right. yeah, that's yeah, such had, a lucky thing. Fish. He had to call yeah. back to Indianapolis, yeah the whole thing. <laughs> that's incredible. And uh, he sent me an email and we compared VIN numbers and she said that's your car so uh, you need to get it back. That's awesome. So, and here it is. That's incredible, yeah. dude. What a story. All right, so we're checking out the motor. Steve, tell me what we got here. Well, basically, Austin, what this is, is your A12 package, 446 pack. Six pack being the three two barrel Hollies on there, all three of them 2300 series Hollies. The uh, air cleaner was unique in the fact that it had a rubber seal for the big scoop that was on the hood. Other six pack cars had a different hood seal, but this one is unique. The pan and air cleaner are basically the same as the other six pack uh, option cars for the for that era. A12s were all business. There's no power steering, no power brakes, no air conditioning. A12 cars got a unique uh, radiator. Uh, they had a, a four pin lift off hood that was factory. Outside of that, that's uh, pretty much what you see is what you get. Yeah, that's awesome. And I read something that this makes 390 horsepower? Yeah, they advertise it at 390 horsepower and 575 foot-pounds of torque, something like that. There's a lot of conjecture there that those numbers were fudged a little bit yeah. for insurance reasons. Okay. But uh, I think uh, Hot Rod Magazine did a test on it and they came up with numbers more like 430 horsepower. Really? And yeah. Okay. What is the transmission that's running this thing? Transmission, uh, A12 cars either came with a four speed or a 727 torque flight. The transmission that the A12s got were what they called the Hemi automatic. If you looked at Chrysler's uh, order sheet, it was a what they considered a severe duty transmission. Uh, Hemi police cars and A12s got the severe duty really? uh, 727. Okay. What about the exhaust? What kind of exhaust is on here? Is it just stock or did you do anything as far um, as exhaust goes? As far as exhaust went, when I got the car back, I didn't like the exhaust system that was on it. Uh, From tip, the previous owner, he, yeah, he had changed it. The original exhaust system on these things were a, a dual okay. two and a quarter system with what they called a Hemi style muffler. This time around, I did a little research and decided I would uh, upgrade a little bit and went yeah. to a Borla system. I used Borla Attacks. This is a full two and a half inch stainless steel system out dumped at the axle. This is just my personal preference. I don't like the tailpipes on these cars because yeah. it's got a nice ass and yeah. I don't want to mess with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it I takes away it. from it. So I dumped it at the axle like I did back in the old days. Yeah, that's awesome. And then that's kind of where I left it. One of the unique things about this car, and they were originally 383 cars. And when they rolled them in off the assembly line, they, they deleted disc brakes. The car automatically got police suspension on it. Yeah. And they removed the disc brakes and put in three inch drum brakes. So this thing actually had three inch drum brakes wow. in the front. You know, okay. We went from disc back to drum. Yeah. but. 
The Chrysler engineers uh, felt that that stopped better than the original disc brake. Do you still have the drum brakes on yeah. here? Cool. Yeah, I've thought about maybe changing them at some point. Uh, a car like this, when you start messing with anything internal, the, the engine is all original. I marked this engine when I had it the first time in 1980. It is the correct engine for the car. My marks are still on this block. The first thing I checked when I went and looked at the car, yeah, I awesome. marked the ID pad. That is so cool. And it's, it's still the original engine. You start messing with changing this or that or inside and out or changing, yeah. the car suddenly is not what the car is supposed to be. Yeah, it it exactly. becomes kind of a resto mod, but I try to keep it as original as I can, you know, within within reason. They didn't make very many. They only made 1,907 Dodges. There was 900 and something Roadrunners that were A12 package. There was a little bit of difference in some parts between, you know, some mid parts don't interchange between the Roadrunners and the Super Bs, yeah. but there's just not many of them yeah. around. Tell me a little bit about the wheels, because I know these are not the original wheels that come on the car, correct? No, they're not. Uh, they're kind of period correct. It was kind of a big deal wheel for the time. Okay. Uh, it's an American Torque Thrust D. The original wheels are black. Uh, came from the factory of black black wheels and chrome lug nuts and the uh, bearing dust cover was exposed. Those were actually originally on the car when I bought it and I still have them. Side story behind that, my mom and dad come out on vacation and worked overseas. Okay. And uh, my dad, of all people, thought the car was just a little plain with those black wheels. So <laughs> he went down to the local tire shop. He kind of wore them out for an afternoon, put <laughs> wheels on it until he found one that he liked. Yeah. And so I, I get home from school, I'm still in high school. I get home from school and here's my Dodge sitting there with these new wheels on it. And I really didn't know what to think at first. It grew on me real quick. Yeah, and awesome. uh, so the first thing I did, they, they had the black steelies on it when I, when I got the car back. It was, it, it, it was correct. Okay. First thing I did was I rolled it in. I, I put the torque thrust D's back on it because it just kind of that connection with my dad yeah, and it, it just looked good. And, yeah, and I get a lot of that. flack over the eight purists about where's your black wheel. Well, they're yeah. in the garage with the correct red line tires on them. I yeah. just haven't. I just haven't put them back on. The, the tires I have on it are, are a little bit bigger than stock. I have 225 70 15s on the front okay, gotcha. and 255 60 15s on the back, which makes them the same height okay. as the back one's a little bit wider. The A12s came packaged with a uh, Dana 60 rear end, which was not common for most cars of that day. It's gotcha. a huge rear end, very durable. Came with a 410 gear and a, with a sure grip traction adder to okay. get, put both uh, power to both wheels. It's not highway speed type thing, yeah. but uh, it does get a car this size moving fairly well. But the, yeah. that was the that was how this car got option was with a 410 Dana 60. That's yeah. the only way it could come. Because they it was a drag car. They right. wanted that thing to get going pretty quick, right? Right. Okay. All right, Steve. Let's talk about the interior a little bit. This is all original correct yeah i think correct. they put new seat covers on it you know okay. and, and freshened it up a little bit outside of that it is the correct pattern and, and correct color i also noticed that this has a a bench seat most of these came with bucket seats correct correct especially if somebody had their if they knew about the package coming on yeah. uh, they would order bucket seats and a console shifter whether of course being a standard or an automatic not so many of them had bench seat column shift automatics I, that kind of suits me i kind of grew up around yeah. bench bench seat column shift hot rods yeah, you know so awesome. it, when I when I found is it, it like yeah that's that's what I like I say we go ahead and get the cameras in and get this thing on the road what do you think okay sounds good all right let's do it So that thing goes quick though. That like, it really does pick up. Yeah. Well, that's what it was built for. Cause I guess that gearing really does. It makes that thing go quick, huh? It's all about displacement and gearing. Yeah, man. That is cool, man. This car is so sweet, honestly. You're right. Just looking out like this, it's, that's yeah, such that's a cool. That's my wife. She sits in the middle. That's her favorite view yeah. side over that hood. Yeah, it's really cool. When you got on the gas earlier, what, what is it like the rev out to before it shifts, do you know? Well, I manually shifted it because the the, the it has a police shift. Remember I told you it was a yeah. police. It's got a police shift kit in it from the factory. And what it's What does that mean? 
Well, what that means, it's a little bit firmer. Okay. Um, when you feel that nice, easy shift from like one to two, two to three, that's slipping. Okay. And what happens on a firm shift is it engages the next gear before it lets the previous gear go, okay, the clutches. And police shifts are real low uh, unless you stand on it. And even then, I don't like the shift points on the... Now, I can adjust that, but... Yeah. I can just hold it in and hold it where I want it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you'll feel it if I part throttle it, you know, I'll, 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 it'll just boom, boom. You'll be through in third gear before you get to the other side of the intersection. Really? Yeah. That's it, we're in third. Wow, that's so fast. Holy moly. It's, it has low gear lockout if you're rolling along at 20, 25 miles an hour yeah. in, in, second, in second gear and stand on it, it won't go to low. Okay. And that, that's pretty typical police. They don't want you to just turn into a you know, big cloud of smoke yeah. when you're trying to chase down a bad guy. Yeah. I like a four speed just as much as anybody else, but the, the fastest point, the fastest way between point A and B is with a Chrysler 727. Yeah. It'll get you there just as quick or quicker than a four speed. It might not be as sporty, but. Do you get a lot of people like asking you about this car when you take it out? Yeah. Or are they like, what is this? Or I have a lot of people think that I bought every accessory from the J.C. Whitney catalog to put on really? it. Really? And um, girls are more understanding of it coming off the showroom floor like this. Uh -huh. um, the ones that I get a lot of interest in, and, and, and believe it or not, the ones that know more about it are little kids. And I say really? 10 to 15, 16. I've had more than one kid walk up and go, that's a Super B and it's got a certain package on it. The day we were driving it home from Atlanta, we stopped someplace and this kid got out of the car. He couldn't have been more than 12 or 13 years old. Uh -huh. And he knew more about the car than probably a lot of Chrysler guys. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. That gives you some hope though, like these younger generation, they're not forgetting about cars like this, you know, they appreciate them a little more. Well, it kind of goes back to that old axiom that a lot of times the only thing that's new is what's old. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's so cool. I would love to like see back in the day them at the drag strip with this thing. Just yeah. There guess. there's some go Google them. Google yeah. A12 Super B at drag strip. They're they're around. I really do appreciate you you doing this and uh Hey, I appreciate you, man. Yeah. It's just not every day you get an invite to get on a on a professional YouTuber site, you know. Thank you, man. It's not there quite yet, but hopefully in the future we keep doing these videos, man, and you'll get we'll there. We we'll just get the word out. Yeah, exactly. video guys if you like this please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more content like this with more hot rods make sure that you subscribe to this channel and i'll see you next time